Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B Ball Breakdown. After that epic game, Nets versus Cavs, we had to bring in the man of the hour, Spencer Didwitty, friend of the breakdown, to talk yeah. a little bit more about what happened in that game and his plays, and then how it culminated in the really exciting and arguably the biggest win the Nets have had in several years. <laughs> so, Spencer, my man, uh, thanks for joining us. How's everything going? Everything's good right now. Uh, like you said, we got the win, so everybody's pretty happy. Um, yeah, we just got to keep going and keep building on it. Absolutely. And, you know, it, what an interesting journey that you've had, right? It's been up and it's been down, and you're now, <laughs> yeah. you've arrived here and you found a great home of the Nets. I, I have to imagine that you feel comfortable with that and they like what you're doing on the court. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they've they been uh, my best stop so far. They, they've been great to, to play for and, and inspire confidence and all that. So I love being here and I hope I'm here long term. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to go through some of your plays last night because they were really exciting stuff. So let's jump into it. In the first quarter, we had early. Uh, now, here's what's interesting is LeBron yeah. James is now playing point guard for the Cavs. Uh, is yeah. that a different feel for you having to go up against him? It, it does change a little bit of what you do. I mean, I think in the first clip, we see I reject the screen and, and drive. But obviously, he's still on my hip versus if it's a guy who's maybe 5'10". I might still try to go finish that, but uh, just knowing who who's on you, you know that he's he's also well, he is six eight, right, and athletic. So you, I made a decision to kind of pull it out. Sure. Now, is this uh, the pick and roll that follows this with Mozgov? That just kind of feels like organic, just in the flow. That's not yeah. anything you've worked on before in that position, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty. That was a pretty organic pick and roll. I mean, it was high. Um, but we, we really just tried to get, obviously, their big men in pick and rolls because they wouldn't switch those. If we had to put Crowder or JR or Jeff Green or somebody in, in a pick and roll, they were going to switch it, and so it kills the action. So not to give away any secrets, but I think it's pretty clear that whoever Kevin Love is guarding is going to screen the ball a lot more than anybody else. Well, or Tristan Thompson. I mean, those are the only two bigs that they really play. Mm -hmm. So it's not only Kevin Love, but, but yeah, it is him a lot. Okay, and so that's what happened here. He gave you, uh, you know, here's the other thing is, People don't realize, in my mind, pros, when they get, as they're gathering, if they can get a clear look at the basket, that's an open shot no matter what. And I yeah. feel like would you can, this is a, an open shot even though there is a bit of a contest at the end, right? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's, that's kind of how I felt. Once uh, I kind of got a little bit of separation, he was kind of flat-footed, and they were kind of expecting me to drive, especially to begin the game. So I felt like it was a pretty clean look. Absolutely. And then it was a clean through the net as well, so – Let's move to our second uh, clip here, which is uh, a little bit later in the first quarter. And again, another pick and roll with uh, you and my friend Kevin Love. Uh, again, they didn't switch it, though. And th this is when you had Crowder on you. But go, go through the hesitation move you do here, because I really think that it's worthy of people who are you know, young and developing their games. They should learn this. And walk us through how you did that and how it works. So what happened, because they were going under a lot of my ball screens, um, I was trying to really kind of figure out, when and where I was going to start shooting the three and being a little bit more aggressive from, from that perspective. And um, so Crowder goes under, and I kind of step back trying to get ready to potentially shoot a three. And then when he steps back up, you know, I realize obviously with Kevin Love back behind the play, I can probably beat him to the rim. So it really just all depended on the way Crowder kind of caught me behind the screen. Mm -hmm. And because he decided to come up and be more aggressive um, in that split second, I decided to drive. And what I also think is really cool here is that you know you basically are doing the footwork for a step back three, right? Yeah. But then as you're landing, instead of landing with both feet together like you'd shoot it, you split it and your right foot yeah. forward. Uh, that's really kind of tricky, but you can master that, and that gives you that, I guess, that change of pace to get by him, right? Exactly. We now move into the fourth quarter where things got really exciting, and here we go again with another high pick and roll. This time you had Jeff Green on you uh, off of a uh, switch. And now they bring up Kevin Love again. And so when, when you see it's Kevin Love who is involved in the pick and roll on the defensive side, I mean, is it your first thought is to be like, I'm going to you know, try and beat him off the dribble of the basket? Well, I, I think anytime you uh, play the pick and roll, you know there's, there's not going to be a switch. You come off extremely aggressive because that's the way you're going to be able to make the play. You know, especially when they're going to be in a drop situation like this and you see a situation where you feel like you can attack the big, you have to. Because the only way to create the help is to, you know, attack attack the big. So mm -hmm. essentially, like you said, we, we brought Kevin Love up into the pick and roll. Um, I kind of saw the way his feet were, so I decided to snake it. Um, I thought I could draw contact there. Yeah. 
And I mean, obviously they didn't call it. So I went to a little fade bank shot, but almost a layup pretty much. Yeah. I mean, again, a little bit of an extended uh, left foot step there, which throws mm-hmm. the timing off, right, of the, of the defensive player uh, and lets him kind of fly by so you can get the shot off the glass. Uh, is that a practice? I'm assuming that's a shot you must practice a lot in, when you're uh, working out. Yeah, I, I, shoot, I shoot that one fairly, fairly frequently. Um, even in workouts, kind of just the extended layup with kind of whether it's right foot, left foot, whatever it is, um, using the glass, finding the glass um, with awkward kind of finishes. For sure. I mean, that's what you have to do, right? Because you have to, I, I yeah. suspect you want to be able to shoot every shot you take in a game a thousand times. So you almost exactly. have to recreate all the, the awkwardness of it. But uh, really, really effective. And I think going forward, every young player is going to need to learn how to extend their feet, maybe shorten yeah. the steps, right, and change the timing up. As exactly. Much. So and that was a huge shot that tied the game. Uh, then we move on to, in the fourth quarter later, uh, you're now down by three. This is uh, another big play here, crucial here. And this is like this is probably the time when the Cavs figure, ah, this is over. They, you know, they haven't been in this situation before. We have. And you bring the ball down. J.R. Smith is now guarding it, which is a different look for you, but probably more what you're used to, right? Yeah. And so, again, what we have here is another pick, uh, pick and roll with Kevin Love. Uh, and then things kind of break down a little bit. So how did this all uh, morph into a shot for you? Okay, so I tried to sneak drive Jr. He was prepared for it, though, so I didn't get anything from it. And um, so it kind of threw off the timing of the whole play. And they, they guard the pick and roll really effectively, so I got stuck to the elbow. Rondé uh, rolled around, got the ball, just basically as pressure release. And then they both went with him, um, and I just spaced to the three. Their defensive breakdown led to my, my three, honestly. And I saw Jeff Green uh, pursuing very hard, so I hit the pump fake and gathered with a dribble just for the rhythm and went ahead and was able to knock it down. So, again, normally, or this is back 10 years ago, would have been a shot fake and you'd go to the basket, maybe pull up from 15. So is this another kind of shot? The shot fake, stay in place, one dribble, and then shoot the three? Another one of those yeah. things you're working on a lot? That's actually a shot that, that the Nets have us work on. Um, all the time. And just because, once again, to your point, 15 years ago, you know, the one dribble pull up or, or whatever it is. But but now, you know, everybody's searching for the corner three or the layup so or, or free throws. But one of those three things is what everybody is searching for right now. So, you know, for a lot of guys in the league, once that once that man clears, you know, that's an open shot. Let's move on to, OK, now, again, down by three here. It's less than two minutes to go. And uh, describe what happens. It's an, it, kind of a subtle thing that happens down low by the basket, but how does that open up this assist for you? So basically we had been running pick and roll pretty heavy for the last, I don't know, six, seven minutes of the game. And um, LeBron, obviously being the smart player that he is, knows that if he's in the pick and roll, it's just an easy switch and it kills the action, you know, et cetera. So LeBron motions to love to switch, and so he was going to take Trevor and um, and just switch the pick and roll and try to kill the action. When I noticed it, and DC obviously also had his head up as well, I just fired it to the corner, and he was able to get the open three. And, and that, was a, that was a huge shot for us because it tied the game. Yeah, and I, I want to give you enough props because I know it seems like a simple pass, but it covers a lot of distance. It's right on, on target, A, which is huge because if it, he had to reach for it at all, he probably doesn't get it off clean. But it's also the timing of it. I think you get it there exactly when it needed to be there. And uh, again, that I guess what is that? What is the key to getting the ball exactly when you needed to get there? I mean, once again, I think that just kind of breaks down to B ball IQ and you know awareness. Honestly, I mean that that's really all it was. Just trusting DC and, and noticing that LeBron was trying to you know kill our action and and trying to circumvent that you know, before uh, before he was able to do it. Uh, okay, again, down by one. So you're hanging in there, you're trading blows, but you can't quite get the lead until here now it's uh, in under a minute. Uh, so, you know, this whole play, walk us through exactly what happens and what was the initial action, the initial idea behind this, and then, you know, what actually unfolds in, 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 in your favor with the three. Um, I mean, I won't tell anybody the call, I guess, for this, yeah. but this is typically referred to as Spain pick and roll from what I've seen. Do you know why it's called Spain Pick and Roll, Spencer? I do not. <laughs> I just know that a lot of people call it that. Yes. We don't, 
but I know a lot of people do. Yeah. No, well, I think it's because of what I decided to do when I did this video last year because it's a completely random name. And actually, Coach Gibb gets a shout out too because he's the one who said I call it. He called it Spain because guess what? Spain ran it. You know, in uh, when they run it, play internationally. So anyway, I didn't notice this. I didn't realize that. Yes, there was the other screen coming up for the uh, the ball screener. I totally missed that. So awesome. Spain pick and roll. Keep going. Yeah. So Spain pick and roll. I mean, obviously. When you come off, you're kind of waiting for the second screen to really develop the whole action. And if he if he were to like really just get K Love and hammer him, then I would have a layup. But really, what you're kind of looking for is is the pop guy. On this is usually what what you're really kind of going for. So here we, I have Q early, but it's still kind of mucked, and Kyle Korver is also there. So I'm. And because I'm trying to figure out whether I'm going to have a layup or not with K-Love. And I'm also looking to see, you're trying to basically say, like, do I have a layup or am I going to get an Allen three? Those are the two things that you're really hoping for right now. Unless some just is so wide open that you go for it. So, you know, you get the two on the ball that you want. Allen gets it. They're in rotation. A quick pass probably gets Q with three here. But, I mean, obviously it's a little delayed. DC gets the ball, and at this point, I know the shot clock's coming down, so I'm going to get the ball. You know, just normal point guard stuff, going to get the ball. Mm -hmm. um, and probably would have, if, if they had never switched that, and K Love was low and Q was low as well, I probably would have had Q try to run up into a pick and roll really quick. But because of the spacing and who and the personnel, I was like, okay, we got basically seven, eight seconds on the clock when I catch it. I got to make a play, you know, and this is just a shot that I've worked on with um, with my position coach, Adam Harrington, uh, quite a bit. And I mean, they don't they don't care if I shoot it. So I shot. It. <laughs> I mean, long story short, that's that's really it. I, I mean, you're right. It's, you know, this is the, the plays that make a coach look great. Right. Oh, my God. This is the best coaching <laughs> of all time. Because it's the players that end up making the decisions and doing it all. There, there's nothing about what they, they were calling on the sideline that did this. This is just one of those things, right? Mano a mano, uh, clock running down. It just, it just became pretty clear once you caught the ball that this was going to have to go up from deep, right? Um, I mean, initially I considered driving it. Mm -hmm. But then I thought about, like, the difficulty of the situation, the fact that I probably wasn't going to get a foul call, all that other stuff. Fair enough. And I mean, I had kind of been hitting shots, so I was just like, "Yeah, you know what? It looked." And here's the other thing that people also don't really realize: when you're in the moment, the basket looks a whole lot closer than it does on film. Like it mm -hmm. uh, to to me, it didn't necessarily seem like that deep. Per se. <laughs> okay, right. I but mean, you yeah. got adrenaline going, right? The whole thing, yeah. of, you know. Yeah, it, it felt good, so I just stepped into it. Did, did you know it was in after it released your hands, or did you wait, you know, you had to watch it and see what happened? Nah, I knew that one was good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, the way it goes in, that's exactly like it says, you know, right in. And I, yeah, I, I, I know that feeling a little bit, and I'm glad that you could fit sense of that too. So, I mean, a really incredible, exciting moment here. Uh, it got, it still got a little bit, uh, you know, scary for a second there because they had the ball down two and could have tied it. Uh, and they got or with a three, they had a wide open three, yeah. a little bit of a breakdown. But, yeah. Here's the thing I want to talk to you about, though, is after that, uh, the, the shot misses, now you have a couple choices here. There's 30 seconds to go. You're coming up the court. What are you, what are you thinking here as far as, you know, the situational up by two, 30 seconds left? So, actually, when I, when I get the rebound, you see me kind of take a wide dribble and look up. I'm actually about to, like, run the clock out or try to run it down, obviously, get one shot and, and you know, take your time. But... When I see that it's only Jr. and Kyle Korver back, and that Allen's already down the floor, I decide to push it, and then there's no resistance from behind, so I have no, you know, feeling like to pull it out or like, oh, this could be this is gonna be contested. Or there's a lot of traffic or anything like that. Like it's literally a three on two, and it's Korver versus Ronde going to the basket, and I felt like I was gonna I was gonna take that chance, right? And believe now in Ronde. Now, because you'd almost say, great, they should just follow him. They have to kind of follow him. But it, yeah. have you noticed what Rondé is shooting from the line this year? Actually, I haven't. I just looked it up while we're talking. He's 90% uh, from the line. Whoa. On, on, and you know how many attempts he's getting? Six per game. 
So, oh, yeah, he's uh, in everything. Yeah, so that's amazing. That's really good improvement. So, again, another one of those great uh, decisions where you know either way you're coming away with most likely two points. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. You could easily pull this out and then they're going to follow you and there would still be a lot more time. So I like this idea. You guys are home. You have the lead. You have, the, you know, it's, it's two on two. But I like what you're saying about, you know, Jefferson's going to be able to take, um, uh, you know, Corver down low. At least get a good, yeah. good shot at it. And, and, yeah. it's, and it's the whole personnel thing because you got to remember, Allen was hot that game. And he was one of the, what, top five three-point shooters in the league last year. And he's got an open corner three of J.R. leaves. So J.R.'s thinking Allen corner three the whole time. You know, and you know that as a basketball player, you can see the way that he shifted. So really for me, it was get enough of a push so that Corver can't get in front of Rondé. Corver has to honor me and then give it to Rondé so that Rondé can go one-on-one with an off-balance Corver to the rim. That's, that's really all, all I thought about once I decided I was going to be aggressive instead of just pulling it out. Love it, love it. Well, again, I, I think that we, what you see too often are the uh, teams that are scared or they play not to lose, and yeah. uh, things can happen uh, in, in the other direction. So really great to see an aggressive play, and uh, it all it worked out really well for everybody uh, on the Nets, and uh, a yeah. huge win. Uh, so, you know, moving forward, you're talking about the Nets season, where you guys are looking forward to, and, and what, are, what are the goals? I mean, our, our goals are just all around constant improvement and, and development. Obviously, as players, we want to win every game. So, well, we've lost two. We want to go 80-2, and two, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we've lost two. Yeah, we've lost two. Two and two, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we want to go 80-2. and two, But we understand that's unrealistic. And we just try to put our best foot forward every day, continue to improve and, and go forward and, and try to be the best team we can possibly be. Well, you're certainly on your way. Uh, I really like what's going on there now. And certainly the, the influx of talent – uh, that's come in recently has, has also changed everybody. I imagine you yeah. probably feel even like a better player by having some of these guys around. Oh, for sure. I mean, what, what I don't know if fans know. I mean, obviously, it's a lot easier to, the better players that you play with, especially when you have a play style like mine. I mean, I usually pass the ball a lot. So who, who you're passing to definitely counts. For sure. And by the way, you were three and two, forgive me, and not two and two, three and two. So, uh, yeah, it's a great start to a season where, you know, in the past, three and two would have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, not easy to get to in the last few years. So, uh, yeah. it's uh, it's really great to see what's going on there. And Spencer, great, even even better to see you having some success <laughs> on the court as well. Uh, as Thanks. always, uh, great to have you on. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you on again because we'll be celebrating another uh, big win. Man. No doubt. You had a I hand can't on. wait. Awesome. So, uh, well, stay in tune with us. We'll be out there. We'll find you up on Twitter, and we'll share some stuff with you, too, there. And, uh, again, thanks so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in? Are you in, Spencer? I'm in. Sports fans, to see more of our great NBA content and analysis, make sure to hit the subscribe button, but also click the bell and adjust your settings so you can get an alert the second our videos drop. Because trust me, you're going to want them hot and fresh. You in?